Testing, testing. Hello, investing friends. Welcome into Investors Club. Got a great show for you. Cassava Sciences has fired back at the shorts two Augusts ago. The awful cadre of shorts got together and conspired to take down this heroic company that's trying to help people with Alzheimer's disease and try to make themselves a bunch of money, which they did temporarily. Cassava Sciences hired a full-time litigator that was a former U assistant U.S. attorney. Now they've retained one of the top litigators in the world to sue and have, have filed, have sued the shorts in federal court, including David Brett, uh, Dr. Pitt, uh, QCM, Jesse, Adrian, uh, Enia, who's been on this show bothering us, uh, others, others as well. And they're not done. They could, do, they could do more. We'll take a look. We got the whole document, which is more than 150 pages. Every single thing the short said was a lie. They went through more, more than a thousand statements and, and said each one of these things is complete fabricated lie, has no basis. And they, they point out then this was a saturation campaign. They gave us so much. They, they destroyed our reputation and made us spend all this time defending all this stuff. And that, and I hope that they nail these guys to the wall. I hope this isn't even the end. I hope they also, I hope there's criminal charges as well. But uh, <clears throat> yeah, about time. I see Jay Kersowitz just say two words, Joe. About time. About time. You got that right. Let's get into it. Uh, we'll, we'll take a look at their press release. And then we got the whole document as well. I went through and grabbed some stuff out of the whole document. Uh, it's 150 pages long, but I, 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 I skimmed it and went through it. I got, I, got, I got a feel for the whole thing and then grabbed a bunch of important stuff out. So we'll take a look at all that stuff. Not an investment advisor, not investment advice, number one rank stock analyst in the world. What we're doing here is the best research and analysis for you and me, the regular investor, because it's been so much misinformation and disinformation from the financial media lying to us about everything, lying to us about cassava, lying to us about all of this, the good stocks because they don't have our best interest in mind, controlled by the hedge funds and the special interest, but that's okay. We have each other, we have Investors Club, and we're gonna do a way better job than those boneheads in the financial media ever could anyway. If you like that, please hit like. The algorithm likes like, and you're gonna like liking like as well, and subscribe as well, like and, and sub, and let's, let's do it. Let's dive in and do it. Got some other stuff, we'll have to do that other stuff tomorrow. Uh, cassava was up in, into the 38s on the news, and now it's bounced back to only being up about a third of a percent. Okie dokie. <clears throat> Here's the press release, and then we'll take a look at the document, the lawsuit itself. Uh, la, 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 la. Cassava Sciences today announced it has filed a lawsuit in federal court against certain individuals who executed a short and distort campaign against the company. The 150-plus page complaint alleges that the defendant's dis disinformation campaign caused a precipitous decline in Cassava Science's stock price, a multi-billion dollar decline in its market capitalization, and delayed the company's work in developing a treatment for Alzheimer's disease. If this gets, if, if, if this is successful, this is more ammo to go to the FDA and say, look, We've been on the up and up this entire time. The, the this people are dying. They need this treatment, and we were slowed down uh, by by this criminal behavior. <clears throat> the lawsuit alleges defendants placed personal enrichment over science, over the health of patients, and over the truth. Defendants saw an opportunity to manipulate a stock price and financially benefit from their short positions by defaming a company developing a drug for people with Alzheimer's disease, a condition that afflicts millions of people. Defendants seized that opportunity and while enriching themselves, caused irreparable harm to the company, its attempts to find a treatment for the disease, and patients waiting for that treatment. Defendants' conduct is beyond shameful. It is unlawful. Unlawful. They did not name Bick in this, which bugs me, but maybe she'll be, in, maybe they'll, they didn't name Bick or Jordan. They talk about Jordan, uh, but maybe they'll get him in the next one. <clears throat> the complaint identifies over 1,000 false and defamatory statements made by the defend defendants in submissions to the U.S. Uh, FDA, as well as reports and presentations that defendants published online or on social media. According to the complaint, defendants saturated the market, investors, federal agencies, testing sites, and others with their false and defamatory message about cassava. Defendants did not have any 
real or valid concerns with cassava, its foundational science, or its tests. Defendants engage in their saturation campaign to profit based on a decline in cassava stock price. Cassava Sciences has retained J. Eric Connolly, managing chair of the litigation group at Banesh, Friedlander, Copeland, and Aronoff, LLP, to represent it in this matter. Mr. Connolly has litigated some of the largest defamation claims in the country, including a $6 billion claim against ABC and a multi-billion and multi-billion dollar claims brought on behalf of voting technology company against Fox News and others based on their statements following the 2020 U.S. election. There are serious consequences when people use disinformation as a way to deflate a company's stock price and make money by shorting the stock, said Mr. Connolly. These actions not only financially hurt the company and its investors, but they also cast a permanent cloud over research being done to try to find a treatment for a terrible disease that is just wrong. Couldn't exactly, it is just wrong. It's terrible. We are still investigating whether additional individuals or entities should be brought into this case or have separate, separate claims brought against them. Excellent. So it could be Bick and Jordan, the lawyer, and Bick, Bick the uh, awful person. We are still inv investigating whether additional individuals or entities should be brought into this case. Excellent. You know, when they get the screws to these people, maybe uh, peripheral people like Adrian and, and, uh, and Jesse, maybe they'll, maybe they'll sing. Maybe they'll sing and give up everybody. The filing of this lawsuit marks another step in Cassava Science's vigorous defense of itself and its stakeholders. It follows Cassava Science's press release denying the disinformation being disseminated by defendants. Okay, and then let's take a look. Here's the whole thing, the whole shebang. Hat tip the great Matt Nachtrab, Natcher, uh, who, who got who uh, put this link out there. So uh, it, it's I've got I've got a just a. Okay, so as I was scrolling through, it was it was black. Now we can see. So 150 pages. I went through and grabbed a whole bunch of stuff. A lot of it, a lot of what we've seen that they just establish here's what to know about cassava. But then it goes through, like for example, right here, it's it's saying here is all the things they said about cassava, and it lists the first statement as A, the second statement as B, the second third statement as C, and th this is just th th this is just for. This one is just for uh, cassava being a fraud. Then there's a whole nother one for uh, semifilam being unsafe. Then there's a whole nother one for manipulated data. Then there's a whole nother one for Western blots. Then there's a whole nother one for uh, different categories. But just on the first one, cassava being a fraud, all the statements that they made that are just totally wrong, A, B, C, and then it goes down all the way to, once you get down to Z, then it goes A, A, B, B, C, C. It gets all the way down to H, H, H. Okay. So anyway, so let's go through and take a look at some of this, some of the particulars. United States District Court, Southern District of New York. So that's where this is being litigated. Cassava Sciences Plaintiff versus David Brett, Jeffrey Pitt, Quintessential Capital Management, QCM. Adrian Heil Butt, Dr Jesse Brodkin, Ania Milioris, and Patrick Markey Defendants. Defendants' money-making campaign was bold, creative, and highly profitable for them. It was also unlawful. Defendants artificially deflated Cassava's stock price through a coordinated practice of releasing factually inaccurate, inaccurate information about the company. Each of the defendants held short positions in Cassava's stock price, so maybe Jordan and Bick didn't have short positions. Defendants needed Cassava's stock price to fall to make a profit on their short positions. Defendants used their disinformation campaign to ensure that Cassava's stock price would fall so they would profit while the company suffered. Defendants' scheme highlights the difference between meaningful scientific debate and intentional fraud. Who's the fraudster, Elizabeth Bick? Prior to August 18th, Brett and Pitt reached an agreement. That they would so that later on we'll see there's defamation and there's conspiracy to, to defame as well. So they're they're conspiring here. Brett and Pitt reached an agreement that they would each take short positions in Cassava Sciences and drive down the company's stock price by publishing factually inaccurate information. Among other things, Brett and Pitt re 
obtained Thomas to help them publish and disseminate factually inaccurate information, Jordan Thomas. At all times, Brett and Pitt knew that Thomas was a New York-based attorney and that he would use his New York-based firm to help publish and disseminate factually inaccurate information. On August 8th, on August 18th, after securing short positions, Brett and Pook took their first step in, in spreading disinformation, authorizing Thomas to send a citizen's petition to FDA, including factually inaccurate information about cassava, its testing, and the science underlying semifilam. The purpose of the letter was to convey that cassava was a fraud because this drug semifilam was predicated on manipulated science and cassava had manipulated the testing associated with the drug. The information included in the August 18 letter was factually inaccurate. None of the scientific studies underlying semifilam had been manipulated, and none of the testing results of semifilam had been manipulated. Cassava was not a fraud, had not submitted doctored information to the FDA, and had not built itself on manipulated science. The citizens' petition defendants did not issue the August 18th letter to inform the FDA of a genuine concern that the FDA could address. The petition defendants issued the August 18th letter so it would be publicly posted and made freely available at regulations.gov, an official website of the U.S. government and FDA. Free publicity, publicity on a trusted government website was integral to the peti to petition defendants' efforts to legitimize their scheme. The citizen petition defendants did not simply send the August 18th letter to the FDA. The defendants authorized Thomas to issue a press release on August 26th containing a link to the letter on behalf of his firm. The press, released, the press release was issued so that the August 18 letter would be read by Cassava's investors and potential investors. That was how the petition defendants could deflate Cassava's stock price. August 30th, the de defendants were not content with a one-time attack on Cassava. The one-time attack would not and did not have the full deflationary impact on the price they wanted. They needed more for their scheme to work. Defendants continued their disinformation campaign uh, authorizing Thomas to send a second letter. Le that letter can continue the narrative. Cassava was a fraud because it predicated on manipulated science, manipulated testing. Information included was factually inaccurate. None of the scientific studies under underlying Smithland had been manipulated. None of the testing results on Smithland had been manipulated. Cassava was not a fraud, had not submitted doctrine information to the FDA, and had not built itself on manipulated science. They put, they have that whole statement in there about a hundred times. So I, I left it out going forward a bunch of times, but they say over and over and over explicitly, there was no manipulation of anything. There was no fraud of any kind except by the shorts and they didn't, they didn't do anything wrong. The citizen petition defendants did not issue, uh, legitimize their scheme. We saw that. They were just getting started. Brett and Pitt authorized Thomas to send a third letter on September 9th continued to accuse Cassava of perpetrating a fraud in connection to obtaining approval from the FDA in his public statements. The, the information included in the September 9th letter was factually inaccurate. None of the st studies underlying Smithland had been manipulated. None of the testing results were manipulated. Nor was the scientific community questioning Cassava's studies and testing results. A hired gun had joined the disinformation campaign. Cassava was not a fraud, had not submitted doctrine information to the FDA, had not built itself on manipulated science. And now we get to the dot-com defendants, Jesse, Adrian, and the like. November 2nd, the dot-com defendants were the next group to join the campaign to drive down Cassava's stock price so they could benefit from their short position. On information and belief, the domain name cassavafraud.com was registered by the dot-com defendants on October 31st, 2021. Defendants identified themselves as the owners and operators of cassavafraud.com, simuflimflam.com, which is substantively identical to cassavafraud.com, and on information and belief was registered at .com. Uh, prior to November 2nd, Heilbutt, Markey, Miloris, and Brodkin reached an agreement, so they're conspiring, that they would each take short positions in cassava stock and would drive down the company's stock price by publishing factually inaccurate information. Among other things, the dot-com defendants registered cassavafraud.com and simuflimflam.com to help them publish and disseminate the factually inaccurate information. 
At all times, Markey, Maloris, and Brodkin knew that Heilbutt was a New York resident and that he would create and publish defamatory statements about cassava from his New York residence. Okay, so this is in New York court, and they're going after Heilbutt for being a New Yorker. This is federal court, but it happens to be in New York. This is the second Jordan was in New York, Heilbutt was in New York, and they're saying they knew he was in New York. So it's federal court, but somehow they might be able to nail the New York guys. We saw that the truthful hand was going after Jordan Thomas's New York bar, New York legal law license, his law, his license to practice law. And I hope I hope he'll be successful. But pretty good. Maybe, maybe they're the fact that they're they they're in court in New York and they keep saying they knew this guy was in New York, so maybe there's something they can do there. Marky Maloris Brodkin understood that Heilbutt's publication of defamatory statements about cassava from New York was in furtherance of their scheme to drive down cassava's stock price so they could profit from their own short positions. November 2nd, 2021, .com defendants posted a letter to cassavafraud.com represented they'd also been sent to the FDA. Letter represents the main messages that the citizens petition defendants had made in their letters, namely... The November 2nd letter conveys cassava science is based on manipul manipulation, cassava had manipulated testing results, and cassava is a fraud. I left out where they say cassava is not a fraud. They didn't manipulate anything. They didn't do anything wrong. This was all made up. November 3rd was a busy day for the defendants. Dot-com defendants were not the only ones intent on publishing factually inaccurate and defamatory statements about cassava. QCM joined the disinformation campaign. Prior to that, QCM decided to take a short position on cassava stock, participate in dissemination of factually inaccurate information about cassava to drive down the stock price and profit from a short position. QCM executed on the second step of that plan, disinformation of factually inaccurate information by publishing a report titled Cassava Science's Game Over, a warning for the U.S. healthcare system on November 3rd. It is the most childish report I've ever seen from a firm ever. It looked like it was made by children. The November 3rd report pushed the same messages as presented by the Citizens Petition defendants and dot-com defendants, namely that cassava is a fraud built on manipulated science and testing. The information included in the November 3rd report was factually inaccurate. None of the scientific studies underlying Smithlin had been manipulated. None of the testing results on Smithlin had been manipulated. Cassava was not a fraud, had not submitted doctrine information to the FDA, and had not built itself on manipulated science. Okay, so I, I highlighted that because I'm not going to read that again, but it's over and over and over and over and over. They keep saying no, nothing. We didn't do anything wrong. This is all made up. And then we saw that uh, when they were calling cassava a fraud, it was A, B, C, D, all the way down to H, H, H. So then here's the six statements cassava says to combat, combat the fraud. Each of these statements is factually inaccurate and defamatory. One, cassava did not reply on any fabricated, manipulated, or doctor research in connection with developing semifilam, nor was the research relied upon by cassava in connection with developing semifilam fabricated, manipulated, or doctored. The underlying research and backup for the underlying research demonstrate that the research relied upon by cassava in connection with developing semifilam was not fabricated, manipulated, or doctored. Two, cassava did not fabricate, manipulate, or doctor the studies conducted on semifilin, nor were the studies fabricated, manipulated, or doctored by the laboratories, scientists, and doctors involved with the studies. The underlying studies, tests, intake procedures, and analysis demonstrate that the studies conducted on semifilin were not fabricated, manipulated, or doctored by anybody. Three, the research relied upon by cassava for the development of smithlin and studies conducted on smithlin do not contain material errors or undisclosed anomalies. The information included in the research and studies are consistent with testing protocols, testing results, peer-reviewed publications, and studies. The underlying research and studies, as well as peer-reviewed publications and studies, demonstrate that cassava's research and studies do not contain material errors or undisclosed anomalies. Four, Cassava has not knowingly made any false or misleading statements regarding semiflam in public statements, SEC filings, submissions to laboratories, summaries to patients, or submissions to federal agencies, including the FDA and NIH. Nor has Cassava knowingly made any false or misleading statements regarding the research supporting and studies conducted on semiflam. Five, Cassava's management has not received cash payments tied to company stock price, may or may never receive any payments, depending on final test results for semifilim and other variables. Review of Cassava's financial statements, distribution reports, and SEC filings demonstrate Cassava's management has not received cash payments. 
Six, cassava is not a fraud. Fraud means wrongful or criminal deception intended to result in financial or personal gain. Cassava has not engaged in any wrongful or criminal deception. Review of the information identified above, as well as Cassava's SEC filings, Cassava's press releases, journal articles related to Semiflam, and Cassava's submissions to federal agencies demonstrate Cassava is not a fraud. And then they go through each of these, uh, the, the .com, they go through Brett and Pitt conspiring or defaming and conspiring to defame. They go through the .coms. Uh, defaming and conspiring to defame, QCM defaming, all these people defaming and conspiring to defame. And then it ends with this kind of interesting language. I guess this is just court language. Prayer for relief. Plaintiff Cassava Sciences prays for judgment against defendants David Brett, Jeffrey Pitt, Quintessential Capital Management, Adrian Halbert, Inia Miloris, Jesse Brodkin, and Patrick Markey for each of the causes of action raised herein. Plaintiff respectfully requests a judgment in its favor and against defendants for seven things. One, compensatory damages in an amount to be determined at trial. Two, actual, consequential, and special damages in an amount determined to be at trial. Three, punitive damages. So these buttholes have to give back everything plus more. Punitive damages. Four, reasonable and necessary attorney's fees. Five, reasonable and necessary costs at suit. Six, pre-judgment and post-judgment interest at the highest lawful rates. And seven, such other and further relief as the court deems just and appropriate. It is high time. And now I'm sure that they had, it took forever. They've probably been working on that for a long time. Uh, but then they hired a litigator full-time and retained a top litigator on top of that and uh, sued. So good for them. Great for them. A high time. Long time coming. Let's see what the team has to say about that. Join the Small Caps newsletter. Join the Small Caps newsletter. And please hit like while you're at it. You're going to like, liking, like. The algorithm likes, like, and you're going to like, like, and like. I'll tell you that. Joyce. Uh, Joyce, quintessential is one guy, Gabriel Grego. He is not at 3.30 Madison, New York, as his website and short report says. He is a fraud. Interesting. Thank you, Joyce. Joyce has really come through with some deep research. Thank you, Joyce. Great work. Jay says, two words, about time. Heck yeah, buddy. About time. C. Johnston, heck yeah. Let's effing go, savages. Let's go. No countdown today, sad. By the time I hit go, it was already 11. And uh, so no countdown. I had, had the, I had the countdown up, but I had to, I had to, I had to close it down. Rainer, hello, Rainer. Good to see you. Good, good to see you, my friend. Uh, Wunderbar. Hi, hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. Wondering why a person like Dr. Bick is not mentioned. She's one of the main characters spreading FUD. Yeah. Uh, it seemed that they were privy to who had short positions. And it, she may be, she may get, get out clean because she's not New York. And uh, I guess maybe she didn't have a short, a short position. They, they stated firmly, they, they were firmly, we have knowledge that they had short positions. So uh, I, I guess, I, get, I don't know if, if, they were, had, if they were already able to do, uh, what do you call it, where you petition to get information? I forget what you call it. But uh, subpoenas, I'm, I'm not sure how it works. But anyway, they, they, were, they were emphatic that they knew that those people had short positions, all of them. Rasmus, good morning, Joe. Any idea how long these types of lawsuits usually take? Could it not easily be a year or more? I think so. I think it could be a year or more. Yeah. Where is Max Payne for tomorrow? Not sure. We can check in a minute. Says Mads. H Tub says Amen on about time, I bet. Heck yeah. Pale says this lawsuit is very good news. However, the US court system takes forever. Just look at Netlist, has been going on for over a decade. That's true. Now, the good news here is that Netlist is going after Google, who has unlimited resources. Jeffrey Pitt and David Brett and Jesse and Adrian, they don't have unlimited resources. Yet, yeah, but not Bic yet. Yet. Discovery may help expose Bic if she has been getting paid by them. Yeah. The QCM, when in the other documents, it was uh, it was when they when they finally got, I guess, people at the hedge funds to testify, then they found out, aha. Here's what here's here's who they were paying, the writers uh, and the the social media people, and here's how they were paying them. They were giving them debit cards with cash on them, 
like 20 grand a month. Could take a long time. Absolutely. JC, our Lord and Savior says further, they hurt the investors in the short term, but most importantly, they are hurting those that need it most. The patients and caregivers, shame on them. Yes, they, they're, they're hurting enrollment. They're hurting. They, it's, they, they put a pox on uh, the reputation of this drug. Uh, terrible, terrible stuff. No ethics or decency, whatever. Rock, hope they find big pharma companies that are leading the FUD. Yeah, that would be that would be cool to get to, to get them down, to, to tie them down. Bongo, remember when Remy said, stay tuned? I remember, yes, stay tuned. That was like, what, three months ago or something? At uh, eight, Was it H.C. Wainwright? Maybe it was two months ago. Two months ago or six weeks ago at H.C. Wainwright. Yeah. Lorenzo, probably difficult to prove charges. It will take ages to get a court sentence. Yeah, I mean, maybe they don't, uh, maybe they'll settle or something. I don't know. Bick is going to get pulled in at some point for defamation. She was left off this because they might not be able to prove she profited directly from the stock declining. Yeah, I, I, that's what I'm thinking is that she didn't have a short position, but maybe when when the if they put the screws to the hedge funds. Pale, Jacob on when can talk about Saba Netlist, anything else he finds interesting. Interesting, you asked. Uh, Jacob and I are going to record something this weekend. And I'm not sure when he'll put his up, but I guess I'll put mine up. Uh, right away. We're going to go on each other's uh, shows. Yeah. And we're talking, we're going to talk about those two stocks as you, as you predict. Trin, Tr Saba posts new job director of regulatory on November 1st. Yes, they updated that November 1st. That one's actually been out there, I think since June. It's been out there, I think since June, but then they, they updated it and put it out there again. Ishmael, good morning, Joe. Happy Thursday, my friend. Happy Thursday, Ishmael. You know what? We didn't get one of these things yet, but great to see you, my friend. While I'm thinking of it, we'll uh, celebrate with one of those things. Is Brett still missing in action? I guess he retired on his ill-gotten gains. We saw Brett's San Diego La Jolla house on this show. We, we took a look at it. The, uh, the, the, the uh, palace he bought with his ill-gotten gains. His ill-gotten gains, as you say, Joyce, yeah. So hopefully he... Uh, Hopefully, hopefully he's got a. Hopefully the housing market crashes. He's got to sell at a loss because he would have been buying at the peak. Everybody's leaving California, anyways. Hopefully he takes a huge bath and then has punitive damages. That would be cool. My private photo here. You guys never, ever uh, follow through. So I'm gonna ban you because it's always like you know how to find girls, but they never tell you how. Pale primate netlist price has been getting killed because of the court delays, but when they do get court orders, they keep winning. Provided no more delays, perhaps another 12 to 24 months to wrap up cases. I will ask Jacob. Gary Green learned something new. I hope so. H. Tub, Crockett and Tubbs. It came down so fast without even a bounce. No chance to get out. It was awful. Oh, you just, you just mean on the day. Yeah, it was when they did their campaign back in August. It was traumatic, buddy. I don't even want to think about it. Tom Lou, nice and sold all shares at 38 and bought them back at 35.77. <laughs> you are incredible, my friend. Yesterday, uh, Tom Lou said, bought in at 31. As soon as he said that, stock went up to 38. He sold. As soon as he said, as soon as he sold, went down to 35. Tom Lou is good. What can you say? He's good. Rainer, hoping for good data will, will release soon because today's share price unfortunately shows the shorts will never give up until more excellent data. Yeah. You know, if they can drive it down, if they can drive it down a lot, they can say, see, the market just doesn't like it. We were right. It wasn't us. Talking about Netlist, HTUB, I think it will come back. Oh, you're, you're talking about Netlist. Come back much higher than its all-time highs once it outright wins against Google or Samsung. I still think OTC stock right now will uplist. If it comes down that much, probably what shorts saw is time that people that not that not that necessarily that things would go their way in courts, but that they saw that there could be more delays and that investors would get impatient and they could short and wait perhaps. The shorts don't care about data, Rainer. The money markets keep creating fake fail to deliver shares for them. That is the problem. Yes, it is. The only way to beat the shorts is to sue them and or Get a buyout or pay a dividend. That's right, on the blockchain or a cash one. Alex, 
Concerning Bick, the PR says yes, they still might include in the suit or hit others with the suits. Jordan and Bick are my two, are, are the two I'd really like to see them add to that, but absolutely. I really like that they are, are focusing on New York. Maybe they'll get Jordan that way. Richard Pisarski, anything on Joe Rogan? He needs to right his wrong Saba. I've lost a lot of respect for him. Nothing, but we won't stop. You know, he doesn't read. He famously says he never, ever reads his social media because it'll just drive you crazy. So I don't think he sees any of our stuff, but we can still, we can still not give up. Netlist has one of the best patent attorneys in the country, Jason Shelby. He has already backed Samsung into a corner. Great. Richard, anything on Joe Rogan? Do, 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 do. Uh, Pale, good point about Google's resources versus the Sava Short Show. Thank you, Pale. Thumbs up today for Shorts Getting Sued. Yeah, please hit like. If you like the, the Shorts Getting Sued, please hit like. You're going to like, liking, like. The algorithm likes, like. You're going to like, liking, like. And this is not about money. This is about refuting fraudulent claims and reclaiming their good name. Because this claim can hamper Smiflem FDA filings, marketing of drugs. It's hampering enrollment right now, which is slowing everything down. Absolutely. Silver, cassava turning the tables. Thanks, team. Yeah, so good to see. And it makes me make all of this makes me feel bad for any times I've lost patience with the with the management, because uh, they've been no one's been under uh, more stress than them. So they've had it so tough and so confusing. Not just tough, but confusing. And then they find, but but now we've finally figured everything out, and they're firing back. And uh, if we can get the petition, the petition guys keep, please keep pushing the petition. We're up to what twelve fifty six here. Let's see what we got. Twelve fifty six, so pretty good. But we got to keep pushing. It seems to be slowing down a little bit. Twelve sixty four. Uh, uh, if you can tweet celebrities, uh, I'll maybe, maybe I, I, I'm in the Discord, in the Investors Club Discord, I, I listed a number of celebrities' Twitter handles uh, that are related to Alzheimer's disease. But we should get some more and keep tweeting. We keep tweeting celebrities that are related to Alzheimer's disease and then get one. Get one of these people to, to, to champion our cause. And uh, so, so let's do that. And then if you, if you don't know what else to do, please go down to the comments and just find a, find a comment that uh, there's a lot of really good ones, a lot of really powerful ones, a lot of personal ones, and uh, find find one that you like, and then. So I think I already tweeted this one. Let me just look for a different one. Okay, long. So uh, gosh, I already tweeted, tweeted that one too. Okay, this person is showing, I already tweeted that one too. Uh, all right, I'll just, I'll just tweet the next one I see. All right, more than 6 million people have this. Okay, so I'm just going to tweet. There's tweet right here. Tweet. Tweet elite. And that's it. I'll just tweet it like that. And, and, and it's very quick and easy. Very quick and easy. All righty. But on social media... If you're on what, what any of your social medias, please push that and, and ask other people to push it. Adam Furstein next. Absolutely. Adam Furstein is, was definitely a part of that. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Hit the like button now, says Richard. <laughs> Thank you, my friend, Richard. Thank you, everybody. 118 people here. Terrific stuff. I had, had really good, really good attendance the last couple of days firing back at the shorts. Great stuff. Uh, we'll do it again tomorrow. We had some more stuff today I didn't get to cover. Uh, We'll, we'll talk about the SEC, Freedom of Information Act's uh, wayside. There's some other stuff, but we, we, got, we'll, we had a big day today with this stuff. So we'll do it again tomorrow. Join the Discord. Join the newsletters and get the Discord. And I'll see you in the Discord. Have a great night. Have a great night. See you in the Discord.